Hello ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another video at the Pharmacist Academy! Woo! So in this video, I'm going to be showing you an easy way to do pharmacy aliquots for solids and liquids. And this video specifically was requested by Sierra Mitchell, so shout out to her. Okay, let's begin. Compounded pharmaceutical products must have a low percentage of error. So when you're compounding medications, you have to weigh things. You have to measure things. You want to make sure that there is a low percentage of inaccuracy. So this is the low percentage of error that they are referring to. And there's something known as the sensitivity. And the sensitivity basically tells you the lowest amount that the balance can weigh out. So weighing anything less than that will lead to inaccuracy. And there is something known as the minimum weighable quantity. And it's a little bit different from the sensitivity because this actually takes into consideration the percentage of error. Now, according to the United States Pharmacopeia, all balances must have a 5% or lower rate of error. So, for example, if you measure something 100 times, the weight should be spot on at least 95 times. All balances have a point below which they cannot measure accurately, and this is known as the sensitivity. Now, how is that different from the minimum weighable quantity? So here's the formula in case you ever need to calculate this. But on the New York State Pharmacy Compounding Exam, they do give you the minimum weighable quantity, and that's what you need in order to find out or in order to calculate your aliquot. So you don't need to worry about this too much, but this is here for your information. Now, the MWQ is similar to the sensitivity, but it takes into account the percent error tolerated, and this will automatically increase the lowest amount that the balance can weigh because we are allowing a certain amount of error. So if the minimum weighable quantity is 20 milligrams, that simply means, once again, is that you cannot weigh anything less than 20 milligrams because there's going to be inaccuracy and increase the potential for error. So this is when you want to use an aliquot. So an aliquot is a portion of a larger sample, often an equally divided portion. An aliquot part of 15 is 5, for example. And I like the second definition here. In the chemical and pharmaceutical industries, the aliquot method refers to measuring out a small amount of a chemical or drug by dividing up or diluting, and that's the key word, a larger amount. So let's take a look at some examples. You need to weigh 10 milligrams of drug A, but the minimum weighable quantity is 20 milligrams. All you need to do in this case is follow this formula here. On the left side, it's pretty straightforward. You have the amount needed over the minimal weighable quantity. So in this case, it will be 10 milligrams over 20. On the right side, all you're trying to do is to create a dilution. So a larger weight or a larger amount or a larger volume so that you could weigh this new aliquot weight and that will contain your amount needed. Let's keep going in order for you to understand exactly what I mean. So the new aliquot weight, so this will be the amount needed, so in this case 10 milligrams, times the first number that will get you to the MWQ or higher. So 10 over 20 equals to 20 over X, and on the right side, the 20 is because I used the multiplier 2. So 10 times 2 gave me this new aliquot weight of 20. If you solve for X, your total dilution should be 40 milligrams, which will contain 20 milligrams of drug A plus 20 milligrams of lactose. If you're preparing this, what you want to do next is you want to weigh out 20 milligrams from the total dilution that you just made. So after you make your total dilution, just weigh out the minimal weighable quantity. 
And this 20 milligrams or this minimal weighable quantity will contain 10 milligrams of active drug and 10 milligrams of lactose. Example number two, you need to weigh 95 milligrams of drug B, but the MWQ is 100 milligrams. You have 95 over 100 equals to 190 over X. I got the 190 because I used the multiplier of two, so 95 times two got me 190 over X. So we will create a dilution that will contain 190 milligrams of drug B plus 10 milligrams of lactose. For preparation, we will weigh out the minimal weighable quantity, in this case, 100 milligrams, and this 100 milligrams is 95 milligrams of active ingredient and five milligrams of lactose. If you've noticed the numerator from the left, right, so the multiplier in this case was two, so 95 times two is 190. You will notice that it's the same multiplier that you will use for the denominator, so 100 times two is 200 milligrams. And that also applied for the first example. So that's simply what you need to do. Once you get that multiplier, multiply top and bottom to get the numbers on the right, which will keep the ratio the same. It will keep the concentration the same. If you divide it, you should get the same answer, right? So you simply made a larger dilution. You took out the MWQ, and then in the MWQ, you have the active ingredient that you needed plus some inactive product. Example number three, it follows the same concept. You need to measure 3 ml of drug C using a graduated cylinder, but the minimum measurable quantity in this case is 5 ml. 3 over 5 equals to 6 over x. I got the 6 because I used the multiplier of 2, so 3 times 2 is 6. You will create a dilution, total of 10 ml, so 6 ml of drug C plus 4 ml of water. The preparation, you will measure the MMQ. So you will measure 5 ml from the total dilution, and this 5 ml contain the 3 ml of active ingredient and 2 ml of water. And I also have a bonus question for you guys, very similar to something that you will see on the New York State compounding exam, the capsules section. So we have a prescription here for drug A, 50 milligrams, drug B, 1 milligram, lactose, QS to 300 milligrams, and as per the direction, the patient would take one capsule by mouth once daily for five days. And this is what's available in the pharmacy. And we have here that the minimal weighable quantity on the balance is 50 milligrams. Now the question is saying, determine the total powder weight of drug A, drug B, and lactose required. So for those of you who are not familiar with how to go through the capsule questions. I have a video on this and I will include the link in the description. So I'm going to go through this really fast. But if you want the full explanation where I go through it step by step, check out that video. So according to the prescription, we need 50 milligrams of drug A per capsule. According to the direction, we need five total capsules. So you would do 50 times five to get 250 milligrams. And this is just active ingredient required. Always keep in mind that the strength of a capsule is usually different from the weight, all right? So that's why I separated it here and what's available in the pharmacy table. So 250 milligrams of drug A active ingredient required, how are we gonna get that? You have to divide that by the strength of the capsules, right? So 250 milligrams active ingredient required divided by 10 milligram capsules will give you 25 capsules of drug A required and now you have to multiply the 25 capsules by the weight of the capsule. So that's 20 milligrams, 25 times 20. We get 500 milligram total weight of drug A. Drug B, we need five milligrams of drug B active ingredient required. Why? Because each capsule is one milligram and we have to make a total of five. Drug B is supplied at 0 0.5 milligram capsules in the pharmacy. So we will need 10 capsules of drug B in this case. 10 times four milligrams capsule weight will give us 40 milligrams total weight of drug B required. And as you can see, this is lower than the MWQ, so we must use the aliquot method. For the aliquot method, once again, we use the same formula. So we will have the 40 milligrams that we need to weigh 
divided by 50 milligram, which is the minimum weighable quantity, and that will give us 80 milligrams over X. The 80 milligrams came from 40 milligrams times two. So I used a multiplier of two, and if you follow the same concept, right, you multiply the bottom also, so 50 milligrams times two, and you should get 100 milligrams of total dilution. This 100 milligram of total dilution will include 80 milligrams of drug B and 20 milligrams of lactose. And you will mix this all together, and then you will weigh out the 50 milligrams from the dilution. So that will be your minimum weighable quantity. And that is supposed to say weigh, not weight. And the 50 milligram will contain 40 milligrams of drug B that you wanted and 10 milligrams of lactose. Now it gets tricky when the question is asking you for the total amount of lactose that you used in the prescription also. So please pay attention. For drug A, remember, we needed 500 milligram total weight powder. For drug B, we needed 50 milligrams total weight of the aliquot, right? The aliquot is 50 milligrams, but it's 40 milligrams of drug B and 10 milligrams lactose. In total, we need 550 milligrams of powder for this whole prescription. And according to the prescription, each capsule is about 300 milligrams, and we need five capsules total. So the total weight of powders in general for the prescription should be about 15 100 milligrams total weight. 1,500 milligram total weight for the prescription minus 540 milligrams active ingredient powder because keep in mind that we had 10 milligrams already in the aliquot. So you wouldn't include that when you're subtracting. All right? You wouldn't include that. So it would be 540 instead of 550. So when you do the math, in this case, you should get a total amount of lactose required of 960 milligrams. I hope this video was helpful. And if it was, make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and share this video. If you have any questions, feel free to leave it in the comments. And I like when you guys give me ideas on new videos to make, so feel free to let me know if you have any ideas. Connect with me on these social media platforms. Thank you for watching this video and take care.